Hi there, my name is James Mobley, and thank you for coming to watch my session, which is going to be about BT and our agile journey and the road we've taken to introduce continual delivery in the mobile part of the business. Now, I want to talk a little bit about BT. So what is BT? BT slogan is we connect for good. And they provide, up to, they, they provide television services to over 2 million subscribers. 40 million homes are connected via broadband and fixed line. 27.5 million mobile subscribers, uh, mobile phone users. 1.2 million enterprise customers and over 5.8 million public Wi-Fi hotspots connecting people all over the UK. We have global enterprise customers in over 180 countries and we provide some of the UK's critical national infrastructure. Rolling out our next generation of emergency services network, which will support all the UK's blue light services. So prologue, I've decided to structure my presentation in the sort of realms of a very familiar book that you should all know. See if you can guess what it is. Let's talk about the status quo. In nearly every company I've worked in to date, uh, most of them, both operators and vendors alike, have always delivered in a proven model. That is waterfall. We work on projects. We use fundings that fund the projects to deliver change to the network where identified necessary. There's a program board that identify which projects take priority and where the capital should go. Usually that, that sort of we all know leads to limited resources, a strain on people and cognitive loads between teams. We also see the long wait times as we hand over work between departments. There's a test department, there's a design department, there's an operations department. It's classic territories. Until recent years, I didn't realize that there was a problem. This, as we refer to it, was business as usual. Chapter one. At this point in my career, I was an automation engineer. I'd taken on board operating Unix systems and virtual machine environments. I'd been looking at NFEI and the deployment of systems and vendor-driven solutions into our network. A lot of the stuff was kind of manually done. There was some automation here for standing up bits and pieces. And we were trying to push forward full automation, self-service, portals, this kind of stuff. And in doing so, I was looking across the business and all the different areas to see where, who else had been adopting similar tooling and mindset. And it was quite interesting because a few names had popped up and I could see that some departments maybe are two years ahead of us and some even maybe a year behind us. And actually, by reaching out and contacting these individuals, I was able to establish several working interest groups, which basically pulled in people from the different parts of the organisation. The biggest one that we established was an Ansible group. Ansible seemed to be quite well adapted, uh, adopted, sorry, and also Python. You know, a lot of people were bringing in Python to create their own tool sets. This small band of merry followers decided to get together every Friday. And in those sessions, we would hammer out some of the businesses sort of underlying issues and challenges. And it was great just to meet really smart folk who were really keen on solving business problems with their code. Hearing other stories inspired me to have a look to see what could be done, what platforms could be provided. And it was good to see that there was a need for improvement across the board. Monday the 30th of November was the time an email was sent out to my director. It was the announcement of a new position to be filled of director of DevOps. Filling that position was an individual whose name had cropped up across the organization and I was very keen to see him start. So keen in fact that I actually sent an email. I don't usually contact my senior management. They're busy doing senior management stuff but in this instance I couldn't resist. I felt compelled. I had to announce the fact this is great. This was the thing I was looking for. We've been trying to get various platforms and, and services introduced, but to no avail, we didn't have the traction that we needed. And all of a sudden, we were going to get that traction. This was our moment of change. Within the next two weeks, uh, I'd spoken to the individual and they had asked me to join them on the journey. Little did I know the adventure that I was about to endure. We formed a new cross-functional squad never heard of squads before. I was told to unlearn and get used to learning. The good news was that was already something I really enjoyed. So I look forward to that. Most importantly, he introduced me to the Phoenix Project. See this book behind me, I always keep it to hand. It's good to review this book. And if you haven't read it, you really need to read it. And we were eased into the agile and scrum ways of working. A scrum master was appointed and agile work sessions were put together where we get to see 
how things can work and how we should be aiming to work. I felt as a 47 year old, very well indoctrinated and institutionalized in the way of waterfall and projects. And all of a sudden things started to click into pace. I had actually found my Eric. And my Eric, every time he spoke, was making more sense than a lot of things had done for many years. So I was compelled to follow this journey. Friday the 15th of January, 2021. We just completed our first ever sprint, two weeks. We had a massive sprint planning session that lasted nearly two days and the squad were keen. We had all our new starters, a fantastic group of early adopters, people that really wanted to see the success and were eager for change. We established a collaboration tooling on the various platforms, wikis, ticketing systems, messaging boards, where we would chat, where we do our whiteboarding. We managed to expose, get exposure to other agile areas of the business, see how they operated, get an idea, be inspired. We were also given the luxury of our own equipment. We stood up our own sandpit environment, uh, an area which we could safely experiment without causing too much grief to the rest of the business. Uh, and there's a little ode to the cowbell there because we always needed more cowbell. The journey had well and truly begun. From that point onwards, February through to May, we spent the next couple of months inviting others to read with us. Uh, we had lots of internal sharing and discussions of the materials that were presented to us. Uh, we managed to generate a really good groundswell. There were various other areas and other squads being spun up at the same time. We were encouraged.